Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak at CDI 2020. My name is Avi Schiffman, and I'm an 18-year-old from Washington State. Back in early January, I created one of the largest coronavirus tracking websites in the entire world. So far, I have had over 2 billion visitors and international media attention. Today, I want to talk to you about how I created such a popular website and how I've been able to use my platform to inspire millions of people to learn how to do amazing things with technology. So, in early January, I got a text from a friend in China. He told me about a new virus that was highly contagious and that it had the possibility to spread all over the world. Back then, there were only a couple cases, and the virus didn't even have a name. But Chinese New Year was coming up, which would mean people from China would travel all over the world, giving them the possibility to spread the virus to many other countries. This really caught my attention, and I wanted to try and find out more information about this virus. However, the only place I could go to get up-to-date numbers were on Chinese government websites that look like this. But I don't speak Mandarin, and it's not easy to find the numbers within all those walls of text. There was also the occasional news article, but those are mostly out of date by the time I read them anyways, and they're not dynamically updating, and as I'm sure a lot of you know, a lot of online news sites are just filled with annoying ads. I just wanted a simple dashboard that I could easily understand at a glance. So over the next few days, I coded the first version of ncov2019.live. I, des I designed it to be super straightforward and without any annoying ads or walls of text. Every few minutes, the site updates with the most up-to-date numbers from all the countries in the entire world. I don't have to manually enter in anything. It's all automatic. I also designed it to work really well on mobile devices. For example, if you visit the site on a mobile device, the first thing you see is just a quick fax. You see the total confirmed cases, the total deceased, the total recovered, all the information you need, you can see right at a glance. I also included other pages, such as a wiki, a map, and other information, like the most common symptoms of the virus. All I wanted to do was make it easy for people to find the data that they needed without having to search hard for it, like I had to do. So how does the site even work? Well, the numbers are able to update automatically by using a technology called web scraping. Basically, every couple minutes, the code I wrote downloads the latest data supplied by local health departments for each country. And it adds it to a much larger data set that includes all the countries in the entire world. It's actually the same method that Google uses to index all the websites on the search engine they have. So, for example, these four random countries all have their own health departments, but instead of having to go to multiple ugly government websites, I'm able to use web scraping to take all the information from them, from each of those countries, and bring it all into a centralized database that is my website. This has made it really easy for people who have family members all around the world to check up on each other. Rather than have to use multiple websites, you just use one. Because of this direct method, my site updates a lot faster than the news articles because it is in real time. It is even faster than my own government. I was reading the New York Times one day when I came across an article talking about how slow the CDC is at adopting new technology. They briefly talked about my website, and I found the quote interesting. Some staff members were mortified when a Seattle teenager managed to compile coronavirus data faster than the agency itself, creating a website that attracted millions of daily visitors. If a high schooler can do it, someone at the CDC should be able to do it, said one longtime employee. Thank you. So along the way of creating this website, I've encountered a lot of just different problems. Because I track all 195 countries and breakdowns of a lot of them, like each individual US state, there are a lot of unique web scrapers that I need to use to gather all the data. Sometimes those sites change their formats, like you know they have a table and they have different keys, and they just change that up, which messes up my scrapers and stops the country from updating on my website. Sometimes I would wake up to hundreds of messages from people all around the world asking where my site was. It's a lot of stress and pressure to keep the site running perfectly 24-7, especially because I am just a kid and not a professional programmer. Early on into the pandemic, I was still in school, and, but new countries are being infected every day. This meant I had to juggle both coding new web scrapers and my schoolwork at the same time. While I am sleeping in America, it's daytime in Africa, and my site has to be working flawlessly. A lot of people depend on me to give them the information that they need every day, and I can't ever be wrong or spread misinformation. I remember I'd be in math class, and as soon as the teacher turned around, I'd open up my laptop and work on my site. 
I felt that I had such a big responsibility to keep my site up to date that I barely paid attention in class. I almost spent all my free time working on the site, adding new features, and making sure there were never any problems or bugs. I also had to pay for the servers to host the website. And as the traffic grew higher and higher, it became really expensive to pay for this. Luckily, the CEO of Cloudflare, which is a major internet hosting provider, saw what I was doing and offered to host my website for free, which has saved me thousands of dollars a month. I've also had to deal with a few geopolitical issues because the site is so global. For example, when I first started the site, I added Taiwan into the international category. I was just tracking China and international at that time. And a lot of my users complained saying that Taiwan is actually part of China and should not be put under the international category. So what I did was I made it so that if you visited the site from China, then you'd see Taiwan in the China section, and the rest of the world saw it in the international. <laughs> so another problem is just getting this data in the first place. A lot of the information from my site, or all of it, comes from local health departments of all the countries I track. But some countries are a lot harder to get information from. For example, in more authoritarian countries like Russia, Iran, and North Korea, it's hard to get the data in the first place, let alone trust it. And a lot of people believe that their numbers are underreported or they are just lying altogether. I mean, North Korea claims that there has been zero confirmed cases in the entire country. So how did the website become popular in the first place? I originally started by basically guerrilla marketing the site in online communities I was a part of. Whenever somebody would ask for the most up-to-date information, I'd be like, oh, another perfect site for that. My site began to gain some popularity in Asia, where it had around 20,000 users a day. But when the first case was confirmed in the United States, people started freaking out, and my local grocery store looked like this. So after cases started to rise in the United States, I shared my website on a social media platform called Nextdoor. For those of you that don't know it, it's basically like a hyper-local Facebook that's just centered around your own little community. So people in my community loved it, and one person reached out from GeekWire and wrote an article on it. Within 24 hours, the story was all over national news, and the site exploded in traffic. It took me a month to get to my first million visitors, and only a week to get to my second million. By now, I have done hundreds of interviews with countries all over the world, which has caused my site to become very popular internationally, where I now have daily visitors from every country on the planet, including North Korea. So what have I been able to learn by looking at all this data for months and months? I've been able to learn a lot by just looking at this data. I think there's a lot you can infer just based on the data. For example, a while ago, Iran and South Korea had similar case counts, but Iran had like 10 times more deaths. By looking at that difference, I think you can infer a lot, like maybe their hospitals are overwhelmed, or maybe they're underreporting their numbers, or maybe their healthcare infrastructure is just not as good. I've also been able to watch how effective social distancing and wearing a mask can be. In countries that enforce it strongly, there are significantly less cases and deaths. For example, in South Korea, where everybody wears a mask and keeps their distance, they only have 35,000 cases. The USA, for comparison, has 14 and a half million, and even the own city I live in has 45,000 cases. Once the pandemic is over, I'm not just going to turn off my site, though. What I'm going to do is make it a free repository of coronavirus data for future researchers and scientists. I'm going to make all the historic data easily downloadable in all kinds of file formats, so that in the future, if you need all the data, you can easily download it for free on my website. So how did I even learn how to do all this in the first place? I personally have been computer programming for around 10 years, which is kind of weird because I'm only 18. But everything I know, I taught myself by just watching YouTube videos and asking questions online. There are thousands of YouTube channels that can teach you everything from computer programming to underwater basket weaving. I spent a lot of time watching great tutorials like these that taught me everything I would need to know for free. I didn't have to study computer science in college or pay for an expensive coding boot camp to learn how to make a website. These days, you can really learn anything online. Any question I have, I can just search it up on Google, and there are thousands of other people that have asked the same exact question. Something else that was very useful to me in particular was this chatting application called Discord. On Discord, there are millions of servers where you can message people all around the world instantly. There are servers related to everything from web development to gaming. When I was working on the coronavirus website, I spent a lot of time in web development Discord servers where I could ask any questions about my website to industry professionals and be answered instantly. Now, while I've won many awards for this site, the biggest award to me is that I've been able to inspire millions of other young people to create amazing things with technology. 
I've done many interviews with schools all around the world, like this one in Singapore, where I've been able to answer questions from all the students about how they might go about creating their own website or mobile app or video game. A lot of these kids have come back to me showing me their own coronavirus trackers they made for their local communities. And I just find that absolutely amazing. The easier it is to find accurate information during a global pandemic, the better. If I have any advice for anyone that's listening that wants to try and learn how to code, it would be to start with something very simple. One of the most common pitfalls I see in new programmers is that they immediately want to try and make something super ambitious. But even the small things can be extremely difficult to code. I recommend starting with web development and making something very simple, like a website about your favorite foods or animals or Pokemon cards. Web development is super easy to get started with, and you don't need a powerful computer or anything like that. For example, this is all the code it took to make a simple website that looks like this. If anyone has any questions at all about how to get started with computer programming after I'm done, feel free to send me a message on Twitter or Instagram, and I'll make sure to answer your questions tonight. Now, before I go, I just want to leave you with one of my favorite quotes of all time. The people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. Thank you.